So this is science, but it might kill you. When gas prices go up, people do crazy things to save money at the pump, like putting Coca-Cola in their gas tank. No one. Get that out of here, man. What are you doing? I don't know. I saw something on TikTok and thought I would try it out. Today, we're busting fuel hacks from $0 to this ridiculous $600 device. So we can find out exactly what you need to do to save money at the gas tank. I'm Justin. This is Nolan. Welcome to Donut. Myth number one, remove your tailgate. I've heard this for years. People stand by it, and that's removing the tailgate from your truck to get more MPGs. Yeah, I guess the thinking is, you know, with that tailgate in the up position, it's catching all that air in the bed, and that opening it will just let it flow free. So it actually does the exact opposite. If you leave the tailgate up, it creates a vortex to allow the air to slip right over the whole bed of the truck, just like having this camper cover. Dude, this thing's in sport mode. This is science. This is not a scam. It's already been proven. Keep your tailgates up. Here comes a new challenger. All right. What do you think about this thing, Nolan? Hmm. Kind of looks like Starscream's butthole. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's called a Vortec generator, and they've been around for over 10 years. And the manufacturers that make them claim that they can do one to two miles per gallon better. Before we talk about it, you want to guess how much this costs? Yeah, it looks like it costs maybe seven dollars. Like five bucks, right? Yeah. This was $80. Give me this. <laughs> Does this work? According to the manufacturer, it works by amplifying air currents and compressing the combustion ratio of oxygen to air fuel molecules. So they're saying this kind of acts like a turbo in a way. Think about it though. It says compressing the combustion ratio yeah. of oxygen so, to air fuel molecules. That's like some techno battle, really. Like, yeah, it yeah. It, it's a lot of scientific words that don't really make any sense. If you tried to go to court over this, mm -hmm. you couldn't even explain that science bull crap. It does make sense, so you can't sue over it because it, it's not saying anything. Yes. <laughs> well, at least it's producing American jobs, man, in the USA. For our next fuel hack, this is the most expensive gadget that we are testing today, and it is a HHO generator. These things can get upwards of $600. $600? Better pay for itself fast. If you've ever heard of urban legends about a water powered car that big corporations don't want you to know about, this may sound familiar. That sounds like bull. <laughs> Our main piece here is this water tank and then this HHO dry cell. This is all supposed to work by turning water into combustible fuel by a simple process called electrolysis. It all starts with this plastic tank. Just fill that with water and add the electrolyte powder that came with the kit. The dry cell passes an electrical current through the water. That current interacts with the electrolyte, separating the water molecules into their component gases. The HHO gas travels back up into the bubbler. The bubbler separates out water vapor and delivers pure HHO to the engine through the intake. Just like gasoline, hydrogen combusts in the presence of oxygen and spark. So by adding hydrogen to your engine, the HHO device should reduce the total amount of fuel it needs to run. Okay, so, so far, it all sounds like it's good science, but let's find out if it actually works. The bubbler is as high as we can possibly go. They're up here on the top of the firewall. So next is the tank. But this HHO dry cell doesn't really have a natural way to mount. So we're just gonna zip tie strap it inside the uh, engine bay. This is not an easy install. This is not for normal people to do. So what it wants us to do is add this spacer on the O2 sensor. Wrap it in aluminum foil so that the sensor thinks it's running too rich and advances timing to make it run smoother. Like they even have a picture of the O2 wrapped in aluminum foil. <laughs> I followed these terrible directions as close as I possibly could. Every picture was different. The diagrams are confusing. Now that this is all in, it's time to send Jimmy out to see if it even works. Good luck, Jimmy. Jimmy's going out to test our shiny new generator, but there's plenty to do back at the shop. Not every hat costs $600. Some of them you can do for free. One of the things we've heard of over the years is overinflating your tires. Yeah, I mean, that's something I've done in the past. We also did it before we headed out on the like high-low truck trip. 
I don't know, I guess it's more of a superstition thing. Well, I mean, the idea is pretty straightforward. You want to overinflate it so that it has less contact with the ground. Right. So you're riding on skis instead of a full yeah. fat tire. Yeah. That's less resistance, which means the car does less to push it forward. So the drawback to overinflating your tires, having that smaller contact patch makes your tire wear unevenly. Yes, and also it affects the driving dynamics of the tire itself. If you compromise that contact patch, your tire's gonna wear out faster. Make sure your tire pressures are actually where the factory wants them to be because that's where your car will be most efficient. How are you feeling? Is this science or a scam? Well, unfortunately, Justin, as much as I want it to be true, this is a scam, if you can call it that. In the long run, it doesn't really help you, so it's a scam. Our next myth, fill up your car when it's cold out. It's based on the idea that gas is more dense when it's colder, and then when it's been sitting in the sun all day, that it's thinner and you get less fuel for your money. Unfortunately, that's just one huge scam because fuel is stored in tanks underground and is not affected at all by what the weather or temperature is doing outside. Going out on a cold morning specifically to fill up your gas tank isn't gonna do anything for you. Plus, your engine's gonna be hot and the fuel tank's gonna be hot, so what does it matter? Total scam. <laughs> Myth number six, get the junk out of your trunk talking to you, Nolan. Okay, so this is an easy one. If you wanna get more efficient, lose some weight. A lot of people use their cars as mobile storage units and that just weighs it down, killing your gas mileage. Yeah, I've got so much crap in my trunk right now it's and my car's you. full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ramps, because it's too freaking low. We might have to sacrifice this weight because we need them to get into driveways. This one's science, confirmed by some really basic physics. Force equals mass times acceleration. So it takes more fuel to move a heavy car than a light car. If you've got a bunch of junk in your car, get rid of it. All that trash is weighing you down. Look at that. Oh, this isn't junk. This is actually our brand new Donut Media bubble logo in puff print, like the one I'm wearing. You can actually feel it. It's really nice. It's one of my favorite shirts yet. Uh, I love this color combo, and the blanket's really good, too. Get yours today at DonutMedia.com. Available now. Myth number seven, drafting behind a semi. All right, so this next one, shake and bake, right? You see a big semi punching a hole through the air. You tuck up into his draft while he does all the work, cruise there, and look good. Mythbusters actually tested this one a few years ago, and they found the best distance for maximum fuel efficiency was between six to 10 feet. Now at that distance, you are saving gas, but driver doesn't know you're there, and you can't see anything in front of the truck. So if he hits the brakes or anything else hazardous happens, your insurance premium is probably about to go up. So this is science, but it might kill you. Myth number eight. What if there's a product you could just buy to save you MPGs on the road? Something you could just plug in. Yeah, right here we have the Benzene Cars OBD2 Eco plug-in Benikiji. According to the manufacturer, you plug this thing in and it creates an eco mode for your vehicle. You gotta pull the key out from the ignition, find OBD2 connector in car, after releasing the button, just wait a bit, just wait for a while. It remaps the ECU, but there's no way for us to really know without driving a full tank of gas. So how should we figure out how it works? I say we just bust it open with a hammer. I like that idea. Thank you. <laughs> Engine tuning is actually pretty complicated. You need to have know-how, you need to have a computer with the correct software. This is just a little plastic thing that plugs into your car. There, there is some circuitry here. Says it's a microchip. <laughs> Well, what disappoints me more than anything is that this thing claims it can just fix any car. This thing could work, but it can't be universal because every vehicle is tuned differently. A $10 thing you buy on Amazon, I'm sorry to say, is not capable of doing that. We can use this to mine crypto, dude. <laughs> Myth number nine use top tier gas. Some people paradoxically believe that if you put more expensive fuel in your gas tank that you're gonna somehow get better fuel economy. The more expensive gas must be higher quality, right? Well, unfortunately that is not true. Octane designates resistance to detonation. 91 octane fuel is designed for cars with high cylinder pressure. Your German cars, turbocharged engines. If you put a lower octane fuel in your high octane car, the fuel might detonate prematurely, which can also damage your engine and cost you even more money. You're gonna end up buying more gas. So that's just science, that's engineering. I'm sorry to say, if your car needs 91, you gotta buy 91. If your car needs 87, you gotta get 87. Meanwhile. <laughs> pedal to the pedal, let's go! Myth number 10. 
number 10, remove your windshield wipers. So this next one is actually already pretty dumb. The myth is removing your windshield wipers will actually increase the slippiness of your car and reduce drag. <laughs> need those for safety for one yeah. and they don't really do that much damage to your aerodynamics. Oh, I'm going to be worried about this one inch tall block affecting the drag over the car. How would you look at the front of the car itself? There's no way that this has any effect on your overall aerodynamics. You know, there's people on forums that go as far to say that you should remove your antenna, your rear spoiler, your rear view mirrors, which not only is very unsafe, but the savings are gonna be extremely negligible. It's just not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it, people. Stay safe out there. Don't fall for this stuff. This is a scam. Myth number 11, roll your windows up. Okay, so another really easy trick to saving fuel is rolling up your windows. So rolling up your windows can actually increase fuel economy by 20%, and it's been confirmed by science, and that goes for convertibles like our Cabrio as well very surprising. That's very surprising and I'm actually a windows down kind of guy especially if I'm not going that far I'll just roll the windows down yeah. but running the AC apparently is more efficient. Myth number 12 eco modding. So what happens when you take efficiency to the extreme? Have you ever heard of eco modding? I have. There's a guy up in Slow County where I grew up who had a Geo Metro with a bunch of uh, Lexan all over it. It looked like something Beetlejuice would drive to save gas almost. <laughs> Let's look at some examples. All right. A lot of geos. A lot of geos. Yeah, there's a Porsche. Oh man, there's a Roadmaster. There's a wagon. It does actually make sense for like road trips and stuff. <laughs> not the motor cool. though. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> the same principles that apply for going really, really fast also apply for saving gas, you know? Yeah, make your car as egg-shaped as possible. Yeah. Man, it feels like a lot of these guys are just like us. It's just they're going for efficiency Ed. and not fun. But uh, this is definitely science because we've heard that some of these guys are getting upwards of 100 miles per gallon. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I could use that right now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you want to see us attempt an eco mod hypermiler of our own, let us know down in the comments. I'd love to do something like a Hellcat or something stupidly inefficient. But yeah, let us know. Myth number 13 don't turn on your accessories. All right, so our next myth is turning things off, like your lights, your AC, your radio, all these little auxiliary things you don't necessarily need to drive, but they reduce the power and efficiency of your vehicle while they're on. But how does that work? For those that don't know, an alternator is an electrical generator powered by a belt attached to the engine. And that's what things like your radio, lights, and hologram anime girl are powered by. Turning the alternator's pulley does consume some fuel, but it's always spinning whether the lights are on or not. So how could turning them on increase fuel consumption? It's actually because of what's inside the alternator. There's a coil of wire that generates a magnetic field, and the pulley spins a bunch of magnets around it. The strength of that field determines the resistance those magnets have to overcome. In other words, how much power the alternator is taking away from the engine. The more electrical stuff you turn on in the car, the stronger that fuel gets and the more fuel is burned to keep those magnets spinning. So it's confirmed. Headlights really do consume more fuel, but how much difference does that really make? Turns out, not much. Turning your headlights on is estimated to decrease fuel economy by less than 1%, so go ahead and use your lights. Especially at night, guys, come on. Myth number 14, manual is better than automatic. Justin, have you heard the one about manual transmissions? Yeah, I've heard that uh, back in the day, manuals were more efficient than automatics, but there's no way that's true nowadays. The reason it was true back then is because the transmissions had more gears, you know? It was really common Common, like GM, I think, had a two-speed transmission, automatic. <laughs> Three-speed was pretty common. Then, you know, they started putting four-speeds and five-speed manuals in cars, more gears. Nowadays, modern automatics, they have up to 10 gears, maybe even 11. And that's just gonna let the car be in its most efficient possible gearing, whereas manuals, pretty much limited to six or sometimes seven speeds. If you have a manual, you're probably the kind of person who likes to put their foot in it and have some fun. Exactly, because manuals are just a preference nowadays. They're not something that's actually yeah. needed or good yeah. with the way technology is. So if you're driving a manual, you're doing it for fun. Exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, automatics have you beaten efficiency for sure. So this one, it is a bad myth. Older cars, manuals were more efficient. Nowadays, not true. So don't listen to those old people yet again. Yeah, they never had TikTok or anime hologram girls. <laughs> Myth number 15, HHO generator. All right, so Jimmy just got back from driving all around town. Nolan knows the results after this HHO generator, but we were getting 16.4 miles a gallon beforehand. Nolan, what did we get? Well, with the HHO generator, we got 16.4 miles per gallon. This thing's complete trash. Yes, hydrogen cars are a thing, 
but unfortunately, the fuel source that we had for this was not nearly big enough to power our car, but Jeremiah thinks that he can build one. I actually, funny enough, built these in college. I built and sold hydrogen generators on eBay. Three people bought them. So if you wanna see that happen, go ahead and leave a comment down below. As for the number one tip to actually save gas, Watch how you drive. Keep your foot out of it. Don't drive too fast. It's the best thing you can do when gas prices are high. Follow Justin on all social media, at Justin Freeman. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. And like and subscribe to this video if you liked it and want to see more. All right, see you next time. Bye. Trash! <laughs> <laughs>